Okay, welcome back. This is going to be part two of the Python basics. We're still going to be working with just some basic computation, really just using Python as a calculator to do some of the really basic stuff that you're kind of used to with maybe a, an old school calculator that you've been using up till this point. Okay, so part two, we're going to do exponents. I'm going to introduce what modular division is, and then I'm going to show you some more fancy things like how to um, use more mathematical operations like roots and trigs and trig and logarithms. So you should still have the same CoLab document up from part one. I do. Here's all the stuff that we did in that one. Now I'm down here in part two. So let's do something with exponents. So let's compute seven to the second. Now, okay, I'm writing text here. So remember that if I wrap this in dollar signs, it actually writes it the way that we would see normal text. And I'm going to put a period at the end of the sentence. So if I'm going to do 7 to the second in text, I'm going to use the caret key. So it stands to reason that if I did 7 to the second down here in code, I should get 49. But I don't. Something weird's happening here. All right, so the caret key, this is going to be a little bit annoying, but it, it's fine, we'll get used to it. The caret key in text is the exponent. That's perfectly fine. That's what it is in most cases. That's probably the button you saw in your calculator before. But in code, it is actually not the caret key, at least not in Python. So if I do quote seven to the second equals, right, I get five, which is not 49. However, if I do seven asterisk asterisk two equals, so that's seven asterisk asterisk two. Remember the print command, this is this little piece right here is going to, oops, is going to simply print to the screen. So this right here is printing to the screen. This is the computation that's going to be done. And that's the one that I wanted. So that's actually doing our exponentiation. So that is a throwback to old programming languages. In fact, it's a throwback to the programming language, excuse me, Fortran, uh, back in the 70s when programming was really becoming kind of more mainstream among scientists. But the caret key uh, was actually not a common key on the keyboard back then. At least that's the, the historical story that I've been told. Uh, I think that's true, and it seems plausible at least. Okay, so if we want to do something a little bit more tricky with, with exponentials, so say I wanted to do something like one plus three, all raised, oops, one plus three, all raised to the fifth power, this will not do the trick. That is to the trick. That will do the trick right there. So I'm going to do it. And then ahead of this, I'm going to say, we are computing. Now I'm going to go new line, dollar signs, double dollar signs just for kicks. One plus three, that way it's display style math. Okay, so now I'm doing one plus three wrapped in parentheses to the fifth power. All right, that's what it looks like in text. This is what it looks like in code. Oops, there's no W in it. There we go. Okay, so there's another piece of, uh, of math that's kind of nice here. Some of you might not be familiar with this one. Right, so I'm going to just kind of let us explore here for a second. So what if I did 9% 5? Think about this for a second. What do you think the percent might do? Run it, get an answer, and then make a conjecture. I'm not going to run mine yet. No, seriously. Run yours, get an answer, and just make a guess as to what you think the percent is doing here. Okay, there's my answer, it's four. Did you guess that this is giving you the remainder when you divide nine by five? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. All right, so this is the remainder when we divide nine by five. This is called modular division, All right? So if I wanted the remainder when I divide 20 by three, for example, I would do 20 mod three and the remainder is two because I get up to 18, I've got two more, 
and then 21 would be the next one. So if I did 21, my remainder would be zero. Okay, and this is kind of actually handy when you're checking to see if something, say, for example, even or odd, right? So I'm gonna assign a variable, x is equal to 83. It's an odd number, we know that, that's fine. And then what if I did x percent two? Well, okay, that should give me zero, the, the, I'm sorry, that should give me a one, right? Which it does. Now I can be even a little bit more thorough about this. If I wanna just see if it's even, I would say x percent two equals equals zero. That's gonna to check to see if this is actually true or false. And it says false. Hey, is this thing divisible by two? Right, equals equals zero would mean, hey, I don't have a remainder when I divide by two and I get a false. Okay, so modular division doesn't show up super often initially, um, but it's handy. Okay, so to round out this video, let's do some more math. Let's do things like trig, logarithms, exponentials, stuff that you're gonna run into in say your calculus classes or your pre-calc classes. Okay, and what we need to do is we're gonna import the math library. Okay, now, Regular old Python has add, subtract, multiply, divide, exponents with the double asterisk, and modular division, all built in. And those are handy math tools. But the rest of the things in mathematics, sine, cosine, logarithm, natural log, all that stuff, those are actually hiding inside the math library. And to get to it, I'm going to do math dot, and now there's all of these things inside. Right, so let's say I wanted to do math dot, let's say I wanted to do a square root. So I start typing SQRT looks like my square root. And if I did math dot square root of 16, control enter, it gives me four, beautiful. If I forget to do the math dot, it gives me an error. Name SQRT is not defined. Okay, so that's something you've got to keep in mind. The math library contains a lot of the math that we do. So math.square root. Right? This is the square root of 16. Okay, well, let's do another one. Math dot. Let's do a logarithm, like log. Okay, log, log 10. I don't know what log 1p is, actually. And log 2. So this would be log base 10, log base 2. And log is actually natural log. So um, if I did math.log of three, this is gonna be the natural log of three, just a little bit more than one, right? So if I did, let's shift enter here. What if I did math.log 10 of 100? Stop and think for a second, what should that give you? Drum roll, please. Two, of course. Right, or if I did math.log2 of 8, that should give me a 3. And it does. Okay, and let's see what else is in here. Math dot, and uh, I've got all these other options. I've got, ooh, there's cosine. Right, I've got pi. Interesting. Okay, so what if I did math.cosine of pi? Ooh, it doesn't know what pi is. So what if I did math.pi? Okay, cosine of pi is negative one. Uh, so I do math.cosine of math.pi. Okay, I get everything. Now, if I get tired of typing math dot, there is one thing you can do. I could say from math, import star. So that means import everything. Now I, I did cosine of pi, it actually knows it. I urge you not to do this super often unless you're only using one library. All right, the danger here is that if you've got multiple libraries where you import everything, you might have the same name being used twice, um, and you're not going to know which one is which. So I leave, I'm going to leave this video at that Stop and play, do a little bit of basic computation here, and I'll see you in the next one.